Heavens to Betsy! Betsy? Well, heavens to whoever you are. You're with me once again in the mask fan oven where it's so hot it's incredible. I am baking at a slow and steady 350 degrees right now. But it's worth it because we come up here every week to look for interesting old cool Halloween masks. And tonight's mask is a Don Post Studios creation uh, based on a movie by Stuart Gordon, directed by Stuart Gordon, and starring uh, some great horror uh, folks, including Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, both of whom were in the same directors, Reanimator and From Beyond. They were reunited for the Full Moon Features. Uh, stop the complaining. All right, I heard that. I hear those remarks. I hear those disparaging remarks being made about Full Moon. Okay, so maybe most of the horror movies they've made over the years haven't been anything great. They have made a few good ones, I think, and um, well, on top of that, they've uh, come up with a large number of very cool and impressive monsters and horror characters, I think. Don't you like the little puppet master guys, the, cre the puppets, the creatures? Sure you do. And another good monster from a full moon feature is the Castle Freak from Castle Freak. That's the name of the film, Castle Freak. I always thought that was a strange name for it. It came out in 1995, the film, not the mask. Uh, it came out in 1995 and it was just called Castle Freak. Not the Castle Freak. Not the Freak of the Castle, but just Castle Freak. It sounds to me like that would be the name of the place. You know what I mean? Like Castle Freak, like Castle Dracula. Who we, you know, visit the beautiful Castle Freak. Bring the children or buy some postcards in the gift shop for the Kitty Winkies back home. And, Brings a family to visit the beautiful Castle Freak. Uh, I just realized that I'm doing a, a kind of a mock German. It wouldn't be German. No, it would be more like Romanian. Okay, it'd be more like it would be more like uh, visit the beautiful Castle Freak. Bring your family and your children from America and visit the scenic and historic Castle Freak. And buy some salt shakers in the gift shop when you go back from from Castle Freak. That uh, never mind. Let's edit that out. Now let's go. What the heck? Uh, the castle freak here, whose name was Giorgio in the movie, uh, is not actually even a freak in terms of the way people usually think of the word freak, because you usually would think of like a genetic, you know, somebody who was born malformed in some way, but uh, Giorgio here really became a freak in the context of the story, not so much by birth, by, you know, coming by it naturally, as uh, from the result of spending his whole life locked in a dungeon being uh, tortured and beaten and whipped and, and, and mutilated and so forth. It's not a happy story. They're not all happy stories. No, sir. Uh, but the Castle Freak here is a Don Post mask and, and here's the street cred for you. Castle Freak right there. It's got a Don Post Studios tag, Full Moon Features, Castle Freak uh, tag, which is very cool. And it came out in the year 2012. And that's an interesting uh, period for Don Post masks because the Don Post uh, masks from 2012 really never hit the stores and the shelves and never went into full intense production. There were just, you know, uh, small numbers of them made because that was around the time that uh, Don Post Studios was gobbled up and closed down by the folks at Jemmy Industries. So. Uh, production was halted, it was interrupted in other words, and there aren't too many of these masks out there, so they never really made it to most of the uh, retail outlets, but there were a few made and a few people got their hands on them for, uh, you know, resale, so you might find one on eBay or on your favorite mask or costume uh, website, and despite the fact it's a little small, and it isn't nearly as textural, uh, that is to say his face isn't as is withered and wrinkly looking as the guy in the movie. Despite the fact it's a little smoother and it's a little small, it's not ridiculously small, it's just, just a little on the small side, I still think it's a pretty great little mask and I recommend it. Uh, it's got uh, sewn in hair or rooted hair and yeah, it doesn't really look wonderful, does it? And, but, but, but it was a low priced economical sort of mask. It sold for in the neighborhood of 35 to 45 to 50 bucks, somewhere in that general area and and uh, well for something in that price range I think it's pretty cool uh, the paint is pretty nice and one thing that's kind of strange about it okay two things that are kind of strange about it. three four at most all right let's start over one thing that's kind of strange about it is that uh, the latex on the parts that aren't painted with the features and stuff are is is white is totally white uh, not pale flesh tone or yellow or pink but just 
white, like a sheet of notebook paper or a piece of chalk, which are probably things that young American uh, individuals watching this have never seen. You're, you're right now, a lot of people are saying, piece of notebook paper, piece of chalk. What is that? What is, I don't know what that, uh, snow. Let's say, let's say white is snow. You've seen that, right? Like on a Christmas card in the picture when the ground looks all white, that color, the, the really light colored ground, yeah, snow. That's the color of the latex, which is weird. Uh, or rather the color of the paint on the latex on the back of the head. And another thing that's uh, a little weird is that the hair is silvery gray, and in the movie it looks a lot darker than that. So I think it would have been more accurate to have used, if not black, at least, uh, you know, like a dark, dark brown or maybe a black and gray mix because this almost makes him look more like a witch and in the movie you come away thinking that he had darker hair and unlike the Hulk who likes to be incredible I try to be credible so I will back that argument up about uh, my opinion of the hair color by presenting you with the official uh, Castle Freak action figure which came out many years ago and which as you can see has black hair and which as you can probably also see uh, comes complete with a dead mangled cat because good taste is timeless anyway uh, despite those uh, despite those those minor uh, quibbles I think it's still a neat little mask and uh, worth uh, looking for one if you're into Don Post masks or full moon collectibles or just collectible horror masks from any kind of movies now I have two of them here to show you and the reason for that is you may notice there's there's the big cut here down the face that goes up from uh, the mouth and on this one there's a second red line there going up his hair's in my face right now there's a there's a second red line do you see that going up from the mouth up uh, sort of forming a, a V going up here up the side of the nose well I had somebody asked me if there were two different sculptures which they assumed there were because some of them don't have that second line well I'm here to tell you that's just painted on that's just a little bit of a, a discrepancy in the paint because there's sort of a wrinkle going up there and on some copies of the mask that line didn't get hit with paint and on some it did okay so that's just a minor variance they're all the same sculpture same molding all that just uh, a little bit difference in the paint. Sometimes that, that wrinkle was emphasized and sometimes it wasn't. But um, which one do I like better? Eh, I'm going to say the one with the wrinkle uh, reddened just because it makes him that much uglier and that much more horrible because he's got one more scar. It's always a good thing. And there's a lot of variance in the paint. Some of them, uh, the gums on some of them are very red and bloody and on some of them they were just more of a, well almost white, a really pale pink color. So there's just some variance. But again, not a, a $300 mask, but a $45 to $50 mask in that neighborhood. Yeah, pretty good, I think. And, uh, well, as for, the, uh, as for the discrepancy in the line on there, not everybody would notice that, but I happen to have an artist's eye. In fact, I keep it right here next to my plumber's eye, my dentist's eye, and my certified public accountant's eye. But that's all for now from the mask fan of an attic. Join us again next week for another horrible oddity from the history of monsters and masks and uh, look for a Don Post Castle Freak if you can find one. Thank you and good lord.